Welcome back to another FPL video. This will be the team selection for game week 12. I've left it until late and with all the updates we're getting on key assets such as James Madison, it's a good thing I've done so because now one of my two free transfers is quite nailed on and the second will be between two different positions. I'll talk about this later on in the transfer section, but there's so much to talk about here today and I'm going to try to provide all the key updates you need to know for game week 12, building upon what I talked about in the trans tips video as well. If you end up enjoying this one, smash the like button and subscribe for new. Our aim is to get this video to over 200 likes to be massively appreciated and it costs absolutely nothing, helps us out in the algorithm as well. And there's going to be a lot more FPL and UCL fantasy content headed your way. But without further ado, let's jump straight into this video. Let's briefly talk about the travesty that was Gaming 11. Ariola got one point. And on my bench, I also had Turner, who got zero points because he was finally used up by Vlako Dimas after that mistake against Salah, gifting him an open goal. I think that was probably the final straw. And Vlako Dimas came in in a 2-0 win over Aston Villa, whilst Ariola conceded three times to Brentford. I was expecting a high-scoring match. My prediction was 2-2, but ultimately Ariola hasn't been reliable. And despite the great fixtures, and he's also a decent option for his price, I just don't fully trust him, and I'd ultimately want to upgrade the goalkeeper position. The defence wasn't much better with Matty Cash delivering zero points after conceding twice and then being subbed out around 58 minutes. And he had an injury concern on top of it, that's why he was subbed out. But that was all cleared out of the Europa Conference League game against AZ Alkama, which Aston Villa won. And Matty Cash came on towards the very end of that 2-1 victory. So Cash is all cleared. He is going to be a keep for the next couple of weeks. I think around game week 15 is when I'm looking to sell after a really tough run of fixtures starts. Tottenham away in game week 13 team won't be easy either but Spurs have so many injuries and suspensions all of a sudden that Aston Villa could fancy the chances in that game week. Next up in the defence though was Simicas who didn't start the game against Luton Town and that was the final nail of the coffin there on the Sunday and he came on towards the very end of the match and I'm not really too bothered by that because it did prevent some people from getting some big horse off their bench. In my case it would have been Dan Byrne. Second and third on my bench though were Lascelles and Archer both of nine points pointers each and they wouldn't have come on for me anyway so I'm not really too bothered by the Simicast one pointer if he had started maybe he could have banked the clean sheet be subbed out around 60 minutes and that would have been decent but ultimately it doesn't really matter it was going to be a terrible game week regardless as we all know the final defender was Joachim Anderson he banked the clean sheet at the very least but in the 94th minute he conceded a goal and it was Tyrek Mitchell scoring very late on to deliver 15 points so those of Anderson and Gay maybe a bit hard done by because Johnston did really well with nine points points and Mitchell with 15 but still five points is golden in a game week like 11 and ultimately I want to forget this happen and move on to game week 12 as soon as possible. I would consider my midfield to be relatively good but only one return from my five midfielders Diaby also blanked and was pretty woeful against Nottingham Forest the same with his fellow partner in crime Ollie Watkins so Aston Villa have been very disappointing in certain game weeks but with Diaby maybe a bit of credit in the bank whilst in my FPL team because of that huge return against Luton Town in game week 10 so I'm not too frustrated with him at the moment but he has been very inconsistent since I bought him into my team Jared Bowen did score and this is a second game week in my squad and he scored got seven points not too shabby but it was Kudus stealing the limelight with a goal and assist and his goal by the way was absolutely terrific and if you are looking to buy a West Ham midfielder it'd still be Jared Bone for me but then after that it'd be Kudus then it'd probably be James Ward-Prowse although I'm not a big fan of Ward-Prowse now with his deeper positioning although it's worth mentioning he got an assist for West Ham's 1-0 win over Olympiacos yesterday but Bone for me is still the best West Ham asset by some distance. Next up is Mohamed Salah. He also blanked. I was convinced after Erling Haaland was subbed out at halftime that Salah would go ballistic and I would deeply regret not going for Salah as the captain. So I was actually hoping for Salah to blank. He did, even though he's in my team. I wouldn't have gained much if he had scored or done anything. So that's it. We move on and Salah was disappointing. James Madison is now a huge doubt and this is the big update I wanted to provide to you. And according to Fabrizio Romano and all these reliable journalists like Matt Law, 
the injury could be very, very serious indeed. So with James Madison, he has withdrawn from the England squad and now Tottenham fear that the ankle injury could be worse than first expected and there are growing concerns that Madison will face a long layoff and Poster Cogley will explain this later today. So by the time this video is uploaded, you'll probably see definitive updates on James Madison. It's a big shame. He has been their best player this season, in my opinion. One of the signings of the summer, not just in the Premier League, but across all of the top five European leagues and hopefully returns from injury very soon. The last midfielder is Saka, who's also flagged, but his injury shouldn't be as serious. I talked about this in the Trans Tips video where Arteta was talking about this straight after the game, and he said that it was just a knock, and he's assuming he'll be okay. I covered all the quotes in that video, so be sure to check it out. And Saka is going to be a doubt, but I still think he'll be available. Start the game. He scored, assisted, and picked up the Player of the Match award in a 2-0 victory over Sevilla in the Champions League. And if he can do that in game week 12, he can make for a very good captaincy choice against Burnley at home. So very disappointing from our midfield, but overall, it does look really good. The only issue there is, of course, James Madison and the possibility of Saka missing out. But I don't think that'll be the case. And the only priority sell here would be James Madison. Even the forward line was very disappointing this week. Ollie Watkins with back-to-back -back blanks, missing a big chance in each of those matches against Luton Town and Nottingham Forest. And I think those that sold him in game week six would still be very frustrated with him because the bulk of his points came in those two games against Chelsea and Brighton when most people sold him. So there's still going to be a bit of resentment there towards Ollie Watkins. I still think he's a good option long-term, but once the fixtures turn from game week 15 onwards, you could make a case for selling all Aston Villa assets which does include Ollie Watkins. My final forward was Erling Haaland, who was subbed out at halftime against Bournemouth due to injury. Despite Man City winning 6-1, Erling Haaland produced one point, but I did bring him in in UCL Fantasy in the last minute after seeing that he starts, and I captained him, so he did very well for me, getting the Player of the Match award and two goals, and I think he's a great option in the coming weeks because it's Erling Haaland, it's Manchester City, and even in these tougher games like Liverpool at home coming up, I still think Erling Haaland is capable of some massive returns, and the way that certain teams play, like Liverpool, could really suit Manchester City and Erling Haaland to a T. So I'm still happy to keep Erling Haaland that haul last week, or lack of the halls was disappointing but game week 11 was ultimately one to forget let's now talk about the captaincy my rank and also what this means for my future transfer plans because i do have two free transfers and a lot of room for maneuver I got 25 points this week, yet my red arrow was only by 200 or 300,000 places, which does show how low scoring of a game week this was. One of the lowest scoring game weeks in FPL history, it has to be surely. And if you got over 30 points, you probably well chuff of that, and it probably meant a green arrow around your rank. I went for Hallen as the captain, so I lost one point out on Salah. They were the only two players I was considering for the armband and apart from Anderson and Bowen everyone else blank so it doesn't really matter anyway but still around 2 million I'm very disappointed with the start to the season a few decisions have been a bit unfortunate in terms of timing and I've also made some bad decisions myself which I do take full responsibility for but now it's time to get back on track it's my first red arrow since I played the wild card in game week 8 and I think game week 12 could be much better and I think things are starting to look much more promising despite multiple flag players this is not set in stone but in goal I am considering going for Ariola. and the reason why I'm saying this is because one of my free transfers could be directed towards getting David Raya as I'll show you using FPL.team and I think an Arsenal defensive coverage is what I'm really prioritizing this week as well as James Madison replacements so for now Ariola will start between the sticks against Nottingham Forest at home I'm not expecting anything there though and West Ham defensively have been shocking this season only one clean sheet in the Premier League which came against Sheffield United in a 2-0 victory so Ariel is in here for now, but if I were to make a goalkeeper change, it would be Turner to David Raya and it would be the Spaniard starting between the sticks. My defence looks good on paper, but what does that even mean in FPL nowadays? Matty Cash is at home to Fulham and Aston Villa are averaging four goals per game at home and they have the best home record of any team in the Premier League so far this season and Fulham have been very hit and miss and I think Aston Villa are the definite favourites in this match, but does that mean a clean sheet is likely? Maybe not, but Fulham have only scored nine goals this season and surely Matty Cash has one big return 
in him before a lot of us sell him around gimmick 13 or 15. That would be the hope anyway. He has been extremely disappointing to say the least since I brought him in on the wild card. And I don't think I've ever, throughout my whole FPL career, life, whatever you want to call it, I don't think I've ever got one of Matty Cash's huge hauls like the 29 pointer he got in a double game week a few years ago. Next up is Jamal Lascelles, a 3.9 million, now 4 million defender, who's facing Bournemouth away. And with Botman still out, I think Lascelles is one of the best defenders in the game and thus he's a big recommendation on the wild card which I uploaded the other day. I bought Lascelles in in my own wild card team around game week eight. I haven't started him yet and now finally I'm able to do so and let's see if he can deliver some points. I think a clean sheet is still likely despite Newcastle facing a bit of an injury crisis at this moment in time. My last defender is Willem Saliba. He could be my transfer in facing Burnley at home but one alternative I'm considering is getting Raya in for Turner, starting Raya, and then having Joachim Anderson as my third defender at home to Everton. Let me know what you prefer. Ariola and Saliba to start this week, or Raya and Joachim Anderson? Let me know down the comment section below. But I still like this defensive line, and it should get some clean sheets and returns. A few weeks ago, when I was looking ahead to Game Week 12, I was considering doing the RB to Gordon to be able to fund other moves. But now with Madison injured, that could have made my decision for me. And the RB is facing Fulham at home. And these are fixtures where I'd want to have a double or triple up in the villains and also you look at game week 14 against Bournemouth away that's yet another reason to keep these Aston Villa players for a little while longer but ultimately I'm going to start trimming them down from game week 13 onwards and definitely from game week 15 when they face Manchester City and Arsenal back to back it doesn't matter if they're at home or away I still think Aston Villa players aren't worth keeping in game weeks such as those because they're facing two of the best teams in the country next up in my midfield is Jared Bowen facing Nottingham Forest at home and I think he's a great option throughout the Christmas period and also throughout November. West Ham have some great fixtures. I want to take advantage of them. I've got a double up here with Ariola and Bowen and there's also a case to go for Kudus in the midfield. But I think Bowen is enough and I like this diversity I have going in the attack because early in the season, I had a double up in Arsenal and Man United attack and that was extremely disappointing to say the least. Salah is also in my team and he's a great option against Brentford at home. He is one of the top contenders for the captaincy yet again and despite that disappointing blank and performance against Luton Town I think he'll come back to his best and his record at Anfield is sensational he hasn't blanked in a very long while there probably since April if I'm not mistaken that leaves two slots in the midfield and one for a new signing Anthony Gordon in for James Madison that is one transfer that is quite nailed on this week he's facing Bournemouth away he's got good long-term fixtures and not only that he could be playing up top in game week 12 because Callum Wilson is a doubt and Isak won't return until after the international break. And Gordon is my favourite 5.7 million and below midfielder by some distance as well. Maybe Cole Palmer can enter the equation, but I need to see more from him in terms of open play goals. A lot of his returns have been swayed and inflated by the penalties. Edingro looked very impressive in the Europa League against Ajax with a goal, assist and man of the match performance. But I think Gordon is the one and it also gives me a lot of money in the bank to also buy Saliba at the back for Dan Byrne but not only that I have 1.7 million in the bank roughly I'll talk about this later on using FPL.team as well the last midfielder is an injury doubt of Bakayo Saka and I think he'll start and do very well against Burnley at home and also good long-term fixtures and Arsenal look back to the best you could argue against Sevilla although Sevilla did heavily rotate and Arsenal also have a lot of injury problems still and against the better teams I still think they'll struggle with Odegaard, Jesus, Partey and multiple other players missing out through injury and I think Saka has a lot of burden to carry the Arsenal attack at times. Him and Martinelli are electric at their best. And it's going to be difficult for them to constantly take their fullbacks on and show what they did in the Champions League the other night. But I'm very happy with this midfield five. It would mean James Madison out for Gordon due to injury. And I also have money in the bank to make other upgrades in the future. I've had this front two for 10 out of 12 game weeks this season. Ollie Watkins is at home to Fulham and this is one fixture where you could put the armband on Ollie Watkins. He has been very frustrating as of late. He's missed some big chances, but he's still getting into good positions. He scored the winner in the Europa Conference League and I still think he's a great FPL option on his day. He's going to be frustrating. That's the nature of Ollie Watkins. But since Unai Emery has taken over, he is right up there with Haaland and Salah in terms of goal contributions. The final forward is 
Erling Haaland against Chelsea away and don't let the fixture fool you. Chelsea have been one of the better defences in the league this season but Erling Haaland can still do really well in these big games. He showed it against Man United a few weeks ago at Old Trafford and he could do something similar at Stamford Bridge. I think Manchester City are still the heavy favourites to win this game and I would back Erling Haaland to be involved but is his ceiling as high as Salah and Saka? I'd still say yes but my personal preference would be with Salah and Saka for the captaincy. With these two free transfers, my bench would be as follows. Turner, Anderson, Simikas and Cameron Archer. And it's worth noting with Simikas, for those of you looking to start him this week, he played against Toulouse in the Europa League and he was subbed out around half time. He was at fault for the goal that Liverpool conceded, the first one, where he lost the ball in a dangerous position and Toulouse went on to score from that error. So I'm not so sure if Simikas will start this week. The only kind of silver lining is that Joe Gomez, his main competition for left back, also started and played the full 90 against Toulouse. So that's something else to monitor. But I'm not confident at all in Simikas. And Anderson is a decent option against Everton at home and that's why I'm considering Ryer in goal buying him for Turner and then instead of going for Saliba I'll keep Dan Byrne for another week and then ultimately sell him next week to someone else I could also play it that way like I said let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below but all that's left to discuss is the captaincy and my current preference is Salah as I've discussed all week and Saka would be the vice I think that big performance in the Champions League midweek has sort of swayed me towards Saka or I'm more open towards going for him but that yellow flag is also a bit of a put off. I think he'll start and I don't really have too many problems with that. But it's still a little issue in the back of my mind because maybe Saka will experience some problems during the match. It could be a reoccurring issue like he had maybe a month ago or so when he was subbed out ultimately against Lons and then missed that crucial game against Manchester City. But Salah's my current captain and Saka's my vice. That could switch before the deadline. And the same goes for one of my transfers. I think Gordon in for Madison is quite locked in, but it's between Raya or Saliba to come in for my defensive line, and it would be Turner or Byrne being sold. And by the next week or two, including Gemic 13, I could also make the other switch anyway, so it's not really you know, too important. It's just a question of do I prefer Ariola and Saliba, or do I prefer Raya and Joachim Anderson or Gaming 12 specifically, and if Sack is available, I think my squad looks in great shape for Gaming 12. There is a link in the description below for Draft Pound. I'd highly encourage you to check it out. Using my link, you can become a pro Patreon member and you can gain access to all the tools that Draft Pound has to offer, such as the fixture ticker, the player comparisons, and much, much more, such as the optimization tool, which will help you with your FPL decision making. And in terms of their transfer suggestions, they're saying Madison to Matoma and Burn to Saliba. So it's very similar to my transfer plans. The only difference is I'm looking to buy Gordon instead of Matoma. I'm not a big fan of the Japanese international right now beyond the Sheffield United fixture which I think he's going to do really well in if he starts but after that I'm not a big fan of the fixtures and the way Brighton are playing in the Premier League at this moment in time but in terms of expected points it's 63.9 and I also have a average ownership of 29% if we actually use the optimization tool you will see what I'm talking about it will put the armband on Salah Hallen as the vice and it also orders the bench here Archer, Madison, Byrne and Turner but of course I'm going to be making some transfers there anyway and that will look much different but be sure to check out Draft Town there is a link in the description below and now I'm going to go to fpl.team and show you what my team would look like with the purchase of David Raya. With these alternative transfers I would have David Raya in goal, Anderson, Lascelles and Matty Cash as the back three. The midfield five will be the exact same Salah, Saka, Gordon, Bowen and Diaby and the front two would be Haaland and Watkins. The bench would be a bit weaker this week with Ariola, Simikas, Archer and Dan Byrne and the expected points figure is 66.5. If we compare it to the original transfer plans I showed you earlier in this video, it would be 66. So let me know which set of transfers you prefer. Would you go for David Raya or Saliba? Ultimately, I would sell Dan Byrne next week anyway, even if I kept him with the other transfers I was suggesting, such as David Raya in goal instead of Turner. But ultimately, Ultimately, that's what I'm looking to do this week. Get an Arsenal defender or goalkeeper, as well as Gordon, to replace James Madison. And I think that's the best course of action for my team in Game Week 12. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. There's also going to be the deadline stream on Saturday. Be sure not to miss it. It'd be great to have you on there as well. And thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, 
then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's try to get this video to the 200 likes. And let's keep on pushing towards 22,000 subscribers and beyond. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM, and check all the links in the description below for the Patreon, Championships Discord server, and the FPL League. There's also a link to Draft Town, which I'd highly encourage you to check out as well. I wish you all the best of luck for Gimmick 12 and the rest of the season, and I'll see you next time.